June fourteenth, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Second Kings chapters nineteen and twenty from the Old Testament. When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and went to the Lord's temple. He sent Eliakim, the palace supervisor, Shebna, the scribe, and the leading priest, clothed in sackcloth, with this message to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz. This is what Hezekiah says. This is a day of distress, insults, and humiliation as when a baby is ready to leave the birth canal, but the mother lacks the strength to push it through. Perhaps the Lord your God will hear all these things the chief advisor has spoken on behalf of his master, the king of Assyria, who sent him to taunt the living God. When the Lord your God hears, perhaps he will punish him for the things he has said. So pray for this remnant that remains. When King Hezekiah's servants came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Tell your master this, this is what the Lord says. Don't be afraid because of the things you have heard. These insults the king of Assyria's servants have hurled against me. Look, I will take control of his mind. He will receive a report and return to his own land. I will cut him down with a sword in his own land. When the chief advisor heard the king of Assyria had departed from Lachish, he left and went to Libna, where the king was campaigning. The king heard that King Terheka of Ethiopia was marching out to fight him. He again sent messengers to Hezekiah, ordering them, Tell King Hezekiah of Judah this, Don't let your God in whom you trust mislead you when he says, Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. Certainly you have heard how the kings of Assyria have annihilated all lands. Do you really think you will be rescued? Were the nations whom my ancestors destroyed, the nation of Gozan, Haran, Rezaph, and the people of Eden in Telassar, rescued by their gods? Where are the kings of Hamath, the kings of Arpad, and the king of Lair, Sepharaim, Hena, and Iva? Hezekiah took the letter from the messengers and read it. Then Hezekiah went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. Hezekiah prayed before the Lord, Lord God of Israel, who is enthroned on the cherubs. You alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You made the sky and the earth. Pay attention, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and observe. Listen to the message Sennacherib sent and how he taunts the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands. They have burned the gods of the nations, for they are not really gods, but only the product of human hands, manufactured from wood and stone. This is why the Assyrians could destroy them. Now, O Lord, our God, rescue us from his power, so that all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you, Lord, are the only God. Isaiah, son of Amoz, sent this message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I have heard your prayers concerning King Sennacherib of Assyria. This is what the Lord says about him. The virgin daughter Zion despises you. She makes fun of you. Daughter Jerusalem shakes her head after you. Whom have you taunted and hurled insults at? At whom have you shouted and looked so arrogantly at the Holy One of Israel. Through your messengers you taunted the sovereign master. With my many chariots I climbed up the high mountains, the slopes of Lebanon. I cut down its tall cedars and its best evergreens. I invaded its most remote regions, its thickest woods. I dug wells and drank water in foreign lands. With the soles of my feet I dried up all the rivers of Egypt. Certainly you must have heard. Long ago I worked it out. In ancient times I planned it, and now I am bringing it to pass. The plan is this. Fortified cities will crash into heaps of ruins. Their residents are powerless. They are terrified and ashamed. They are as short-lived as plants in the field or green vegetation. They are as short-lived as grass on the rooftops when it is scorched by the east wind. 
I know where you live and everything you do. Because you rage against me and the uproar you create has reached my ears. I will put my hook in your nose and my bridle between your lips and I will lead you back the way you came. This will be your confirmation that I have spoken the truth. This year you will eat what grows wild and next year what grows on its own from that. But in the third year you will plant seed and harvest crops. You will plant vines and consume their produce. Those who remain in Judah will take root in the ground and bear fruit. For a remnant will leave Jerusalem, survivors will come out of Mount Zion. The intense devotion of the sovereign Lord to his people will accomplish this. So this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city, nor will he shoot an arrow here. He will not attack it with his shield carrying warriors, nor will he build siege works against it. He will go back the way he came. He will not enter the city, says the Lord. I will shield the city and rescue it for the sake of my reputation and because of my promise to David, my servant. That very night, the Lord's messenger went out and killed 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. When they got up early the next morning, there were all the corpses. So King Sennacherib of Assyria broke camp and went on his way. He went home and stayed in Nineveh. One day, as he was worshipping in the temple of his god Nisroch, his sons Adramalek and Sherezer struck him down with the sword. They escaped to the land of Ararat. His son Esar Haden replaced him as king. In those days, Hezekiah was stricken with a terminal illness. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz, visited him and told him, This is what the Lord says, Give your household instructions, for you are about to die. You will not get well. He turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Please, Lord, remember how I have served you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion, and how I have carried out your will. Then Hezekiah wept bitterly. Isaiah was still in the middle courtyard when the Lord told him, Go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. This is what the Lord God of your ancestor David says. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Look, I will heal you. The day after tomorrow, you will go up to the Lord's temple. I will add 15 years to your life and rescue you and the city from the king of Assyria. I will shield this city for the sake of my reputation and because of my promise to David, my servant. Isaiah ordered, get a fig cake. So they did as he ordered and placed it on the ulcerated sore, and he recovered. Hezekiah had said to Isaiah, what is the confirmation sign that the Lord will heal me and that I will go up to the Lord's temple the day after tomorrow? Isaiah replied, This is your sign from the Lord, confirming that the Lord will do what he has said. Do you want the shadow to move ahead ten steps or to go back ten steps? Hezekiah answered, It is easy for the shadow to lengthen ten steps, but not for it to go back ten steps. Isaiah the prophet called out to the Lord, and the Lord made the shadow go back ten steps on the stairs of Ahaz. At that time, Merodak Baladon, son of Baladon, king of Babylon, sent letters and a gift to Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah was ill. Hezekiah welcomed them and showed them his whole storehouse, with its silver, gold, spices, and high-quality olive oil, as well as his armory and everything in his treasuries. Hezekiah showed them everything in his palace and in his whole kingdom. Isaiah the prophet visited King Hezekiah and asked him, What did these men say? Where do they come from? Hezekiah replied, They come from the distant land of Babylon. Isaiah asked, What have they seen in your palace? Hezekiah replied, They have seen everything in my palace. I showed them everything in my treasuries. Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen to the word of the Lord. Look, a time is coming when everything in your palace and the things your ancestors have accumulated to this day will be carried away to Babylon. 
Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own descendants whom you father will be taken away and will be made eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The Lord's word which you have announced is appropriate. Then he added, At least there will be peace and stability during my lifetime. The rest of the events of Hezekiah's reign and all his accomplishments, including how he built a pool and conduit to bring water into the city, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Judah. Hezekiah passed away and his son Manasseh replaced him as king. God, just like King Solomon towards the end of his reign, when he got sidetracked, uh, in that case with women <laughs> and their gods, Hezekiah is doing the same thing. And I don't know if it's being short-sighted or, or far-sighted. I don't know what it is, but Hezekiah, who is definitely in the same realm as David, as far as a king, as far as a man of God, Hezekiah is making all these selfish statements, very self-focused statements. Here he's been doing everything right, following you, communicating with you through Isaiah. And yet he becomes very self-focused that when he's going to die, he wants to live longer and show off his riches and have peace during his lifetime. He doesn't care that in the future Babylon's going to come in and sweep everybody away back to Babylon. Just so odd that somebody who just goes hard for you, God, who just is on fire for you, and then they get sidetracked. And it's not just in the Old Testament I see this. You know that I used to have a pastor super on fire for you just had these amazing gifts that it was so obvious you gave him and then he got completely sidetracked with himself and everything became self-focused and self-empowerment and boy so many mistakes were made so many sinful mistakes were made god i think of my own ministry i, I don't want that to happen i want to continue being on fire for you. I want to do what you want me to do in this ministry as well as obviously in my life. I want to reflect the love and grace that you have for others. I don't want to be sidetracked. I don't want to be sidetracked with other gods. I don't want to be sidetracked with my ego. I don't want to be sidetracked with all these things that all the kings of the past have already had to deal with. We do know what is coming if we've read this part of the Bible. The swooping in of, of Babylon and, and the taking back of the best of the best back to Babylon. And, and even in all that, you make things good. We get the story of Daniel from there and um, another man who just was super on fire for you, God. I'm super God-focused. God, I just pray that today... Our focus is about you. That we don't get sidetracked with worldly things. That we don't get sidetracked with our types of gods and idols that we have in our current day. Very few of us still have the wooden bronze ones. Some people do, but most of us don't. We've replaced them with gods and idols like comfort and wealth and status. God, I don't want to be sidetracked with anything. I don't want it to become about me. I want it to be all about you. I want it to be about your word. I want it to be about your love. I even want it to be about the discipline that you did to your people because of how much you love them. I want people to get that, God. I realize that persecution will happen in my life, but I don't want it to sidetrack me. I don't want to get off of this course. God, continue to strengthen all the parts of the ministry that you approve of. Continue to show me the path that you want me to walk in my day-to-day -day life. God, I pray for everyone listening today that whatever path that they're currently on, that they will see the path you want them on very clearly in front of them and that you will give them the strength to walk that path. For some, it's going to be an incredibly difficult path that you've asked them to walk and, and I do know that you will be right there with them. God, thank you for loving us enough to discipline us 
Thank you for loving us enough to put us into situations we don't like or take us out of situations we think we want to be in. Thank you for loving us enough to not give us what we want or what we think we want, but instead show us this amazing life that we could have with you. In your son's name I pray, amen.